I am Madeline Owen, and I am a senior at Mary Baldwin College. I'm graduating with a degree in studio art and art history. The arts program here allows us as students to freely express ourselves in the language of art, whether that may be through drawing, extended media, graphic design, painting, photography, or printmaking. I would like to welcome you all to the 8th Annual Susan Paul Firestone Lecture in Contemporary Art. This important lecture series here at the college brings significant artists or art critics to our campus. Past lectures have been Margaret Evangeline, Jaylene and Tony, Judy Pfaff, Oliver Harry, Layla Ali, In Inka Eisenheim, and Mary Reed Kelly and Patrick Kelly. This exciting lecture, lecture series is made possible by the generosity of donors in the honor of the creative work and accomplishments of Susan Paul Firestone at NBC class of 1968. Mary Baldwin is privileged to have the Czech artist Josef Bloch here in meeting with the classes, having meals with students and faculty, and meeting individually with upper level studio art majors and discussing their work. A brief history of the Czech Republic is necessary in understanding Josef's work. The political changes during the 20th century in the Czech Republic were dramatic. From 1918 to 1938, Czechoslovakia was an independent republic. But from 1939 to the end of World War, I, World War II, it was occupied by Hitler and the Nazis. The Soviet army liberated Prague and Czechoslovakia in 1945. And from 1948 to 1989, the country was part of the Soviet bloc and under Soviet communist rule. With the Velvet Revolution in 1989, Czechoslovakia gained its freedom. Three years later, in 1992, Czechoslovakia divided into two independent states, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. Josef was born in the city of Prague in 1971. He grew up during the time that his country was under Soviet communist rule. During this period, the Czech Republic experienced social, political, and cultural repression. The Soviets held tight control and there was little freedom of expression. Following the Velvet Revolution in 1989, when Czechoslovakia gained its freedom, Josef studied drawing and painting in the Prague Academy of the Fine Arts from 1990 to 1998. He also studied in Stockholm, Sweden in 1995 and the Academy of Fine Arts in Stuttgart in 1996. During his studies and beyond, and from 1996 to 2004, he was a founding member of an artist group known as the Headless Horsemen, an important group of young artists who deeply influenced contemporary Czech visual art. A, prol a prolific painter and draughtsman, Josef has exhibited extensively in Europe, as well as in China and the United States. He has been nominated and is the recipient of numerous grants, stipends, and awards over the years, and has worked in the Czech National Gallery and the Prague City Gallery collections, as well as in regional museums and prominent public and private collections throughout the Czech Republic and abroad. He was voted 2010 Artist of the Year in the Czech Republic for his shows titled The Personal Disposition at Hunt Kastner Artworks in Prague, and I Won't See You Anymore at the Formal Funeral Gallery in Berlin and for the realization of his design mosaic for the facade of the historic Yerkovic Villa in Brno that was commissioned by the Moravian National Gallery. Josef is represented in Europe by the Hunt Kastner Artworks in Prague, the Gallery Dukan in Paris, and Art Hobler Gallery in Zurich. I was privileged with the opportunity of meeting and discussing my own artwork with Josef yesterday afternoon. Once I elaborated on my theme, which is fire, and the concept of how humans perceive it, Yosef began to ask me what was my, like, why was my fascination with fire? And I simply replied, well, I like to burn things. <laughs> <laughs> His smile and laughter at hearing my reply continued throughout our conversation. He also then began pointing to objects in my studio and began suggesting that I could also burn those. <laughs> Since we are at college, I will not mention that he said that I could also burn books. <laughs> the enjoyment in life that Joseph brings shows the wonderful passion and genuineness that lies within him. It is such an honor to have Joseph at Mary Baldwin College. My fellow students, faculty, and administration are very excited about him being here. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Joseph to our campus. Thank you so much for the introduction, and that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, 
leader of, uh, of the Czechs after his father and she was a prophet, she saw the things from the future and she said in this prophet is that Prague should be beautiful and blah 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 and it's named by the threshold because uh, that's important that in some kind of mythological stuff about Prague is that Prague is a threshold between two worlds, between some kind of uh, real stuff and all of this uh, uh, myths and uh, and uh, white stories and white stories. And uh, that's our two grounds. And one is the uh, school of San Venceslaus, that's the king from the, the dynasty which leads the country for like hundreds of years. And uh, he's still like own the country. He's still the owner of the country, Holy Venceslaus. And the uh, other crown is the Bohemian coronation jewels. It was established by, by Charles IV, the king who was the also Caesar of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. Because Czech Republic was three, four thousand years also part of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation, or whatever it was called. And uh, that's the two other important. Uh, uh, Caesar, he was the girl was second, and he was the guy who brings so much alchemy and mysticism in Prague with him. And that's one of my favorite uh, artists from that age. He was Giuseppe Archimboldo. He uh, was really known with this stuff to, to put uh, regular stuff together and make portraits from it and uh, play with uh, this stuff, and he was really really cool, you know, it still has some kind of uh, relation to, to all things we you know, do. And uh, that's, the, that's the Prague, which uh, Prague was, uh, I know, said to, as, the, as a tourist paradise before, before the third century, in the half of, 18, uh, of the 19th century, it was uh, with this kind of uh, Renaissance of Romanticism, German, and also nationalism, the Slavic or Czech. The Prague was really like a fairy, fairy city, but reality was a little bit different. It was a lot of things which include some social social problems as the paintings uh, went down from the same, actually from the same painter who did the painting on the uh, left corner there, and also with the prostitution. And uh, a big uh, name which is connected with Prague, it's uh, Franz Kafka, the writer, who make, uh, <coughs> uh, who establish some kind of existence, existentialism, even without, without this term as exist. Uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, you know, he never left the Prague, just uh, before, some think, as a year, before he died, he is oh, <laughs> just a year before he died, he left Prague with this with this uh, woman to the Berlin where he died. That's the another woman who was really important for him was Melanie Senska and Lazarus family. He never left Prague just in the end and he also thought that Prague was the kind of great mother it's which never never would left him. And uh, it's uh, also maybe interesting that he spoke German and Czech also, but he learned uh, uh, Yiddish, Yiddish, Yiddish just uh, as an adult. So this whole Prague uh, Jewish society was really well secular, kind of established as the part of the urban society. They, they didn't live in a ghetto for a like hundred years in the time. And uh, uh, other thing which is uh, for Prague or Czech uh, culture significant was the mix of the modernist idea to the reality. That's a, that's a one thing which is really rare. It's a, it's a cubic ar cubistic architecture and cubistic design. Cubism was, uh, was discovered by Picasso and Franz Picabia in, uh, in Paris in the beginning of uh, 19, 
the 20th century, but uh, the Czech after the after the First World War, where they uh, tried to establish new kind of society, which wasn't so much connected with the with the Austrian or Austrian-Hungarian Empire, uh, orientated uh, politician politically and strictly culturally through the, the Paris, France, and they just uh, kind of changed things to the, to the local stuff. So, so one of the beautiful example of the of this transition was the, was the it's the Czech Republic. Something really rare, really beautiful. Uh, other thing which was like uh, like uh, and which also have big influence for my work, it's a uh, this uh, surrealism. It's uh, that's our two big uh, artists, painters from this age, and it's a woman called Joanne and uh, and uh, in the they was really, really cool and all the stuff which they did. It's uh, still have some kind of connection to things which we all could see around the gallery like now. So it's something really, really good. Another guy uh, who was important was Karl Tiger and uh, he was a theoretician behind the, behind the group and he also uh, uh, worked with the graphic design and uh, you can see the picture from the chaplain it's like the, 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 it's called world which love it was like this new world modernistic world which should be something beautiful and different and new but uh, as uh, also Medic said, there was some kind of uh, unappropriate things which happened. But probably also kind of modernistic idea of how to, how to change the people, how to change the world, was two big uh, social movements. One was the, the fascist nation, socialism, and other one was the communism. Uh, so that's a Funny, that's the, it's the same square, it's a slab square, and it's the same building on the right side. And on the one, people just uh, uh, enjoying the Nazi, Nazi high, and another one, they enjoying the, the kind of uh, uh, social, social revolution. And also, both of these uh, this movements use a similar similar kind of uh, uh, graphic design or whatever, so it's, it's really close. But, of course, one, uh, fascism takes a war and <coughs> was uh, just for I know, six years in Czech. The other one, so 50 years, it was quite longer. And uh, it's also necessary to say that uh, the whole atmosphere of the Prague, which we saw in the pictures and what, was drastically changed after the Nazis because, of course, the Nazis eliminated all the, all the Jewish community and uh, gave the hard time to the Czechs. And uh, after, the, after the war, the Czechs uh, uh, took all the Germans out of the country. So the Czech after the 1950s was, or 1945, probably was, Really, nation a unified country, so it's also strange, and we still probably dealing. All the Europe probably still dealing with this kind of thing which happened in the second year during the Second World War. And uh, part of the of the kind of modernistic ideas we have to live was, uh, and it was even probably necessary because after the First World War, where the part of this old, nice kind of world was destroyed as uh, some kind of this uh, population, population uh, explosions and simply there was some kind of need to, for a, uh, our governments to find, uh, find uh, new flats and, uh, and so this idea which comes from the Cobicia or all these really smart guys who did the who did the Bauhaus building in Germany and stuff was that the new person, new people, uh, the different or new space. And it was calculated that for a one person it's perfect, it's, it's enough to have nine square meters, which is kind of funny, but uh, uh, yeah. And uh, after 
the 50s, um, they also decide to establish the, the, this kind of housing developments around all cities. So Prague, which is so beautiful inside, it's surrounded with a circle of the, of the housing development, which mostly look like this. And uh, me and that's me somewhere there, and my family. We moved there in uh, 1975, where this, where this biggest one in Prague was built. And uh, this one was probably well designed, but the reality was completely different. Uh, the, the building was finished and the floor was finished, but no one was taking care of some kind of streets or gardens. So I am something as a first uh, eight years, just, uh, just the crawling, you know, some kind of mud and uh, without any kind of um, streets or, or whatever, so, but it was kind of, was kind of flat, so. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's my photos from the, from the things, how things look now, it's not so fancy still, but it wasn't, uh, as, as in Western Europe, especially in Paris or in Germany, it wasn't uh, set as the ghettos for the just social, social, somewhere low, social people, it's still um, living there, people it, which are like uh, part of uh, this gray zone, some kind of normal, normal society. And that's the, like, uh, this science and communism and views, I don't know what's the name, but this was the, this was the sign on my school, that's my school where I used to, used to come. And uh, so we are just uh, switching down to the, not just this group, was the best in the also mentioned, the service writer. It was uh, me and a uh, uh, group of uh, friends. We just, uh, simply our group was established as the, as the, in the school and we was like strong friends. We never have some kind of uh, strict program, so everyone, uh, we each do it, something completely different. The, this guy with the, hair, with the long hair, it's now, it's now rector of the academy in Prague. The, the slides, uh, the stuff with the slides, that's half from Jan Mojuska, who was a really well-established artist. He's collaborated in New York with the Andrew Krebs Gallery and that, but he's passed away two years ago. And uh, other stuff from the Yanshi, that's my very good friend. He's worked with the, work with the sky and which, of war, which refers to the, to the graphic design or, or how we saw the, the, the marks or stamps in, in, in our life. And uh, in the beginning, I was, uh, as, my, as my work after the school, I was really influenced by the, by the work of my Kelly, which I, my Kelly, my Kelly, which I still think it's one of the, uh, it's really good artists and it's really cool. And I think uh, this uh, pictures are from Documenta 10. And I remember when I saw it, I just think, wow, that's something which uh, gives me the new view of the, of the stuff which I can do or, or which I can, I can use. So, and also, also I uh, use a lot of stuff from the childhood, from the childish illustration, and from this kind of uh, uh, television uh, shows for kids. And I was also a big fan of this uh, two surrealist artist, Jan Schoenmeier, which is still, he's still uh, active, he's still working, and that's from his one of the one of the favorite movies. It's something from Alice, and it's inspired by the Alice in Wonderland. It's a really beautiful movie. And also from the Mikolaj Medek, uh, one of uh, cool artists from the, from the 50s who worked with the, with the um, kind of surrealistic. Uh, stuff in it, yeah. And that's a slide for my first uh, show after the degree. It was called Deusa, I mean, uh, it was just simply some names which I put together. And that's a lot of uh, stuff which I uh, play with toys and with uh, some trashy materials. And uh, it's on the wings. Yeah, that's the one of the drawing. It was, uh, it's two meters long and it was uh, dropped on the plastic, uh, plastic, cardboard plastic board from, from table. And I just simply worked on it for like two weeks and it's got every, everything it's in a written there. Or it's like some kind of map of subconsciousness or something like this. So it's, there is 
which I had from a radio that I wrote, I read it there, which was in a, just my head, which was part of the books which I read at that time, and uh, so I tried to, I tried to tell some kind of story which is really unique and really like mine. And from this, it's a uh, uh, close set to the comic books. I, I'm also a big fan of comics, and this one, uh, that's the best called, I would like to collect the piece of your heart. It has, after it has been broken by someone or something like this, so I won't name. And, uh, and uh, all, the, all the story was uh, not so strong, but uh, this kind of visuality, which is inspired by the collages of stuff, was very important for me. And uh, another thing which I stick on was the art drawing of the face is the, the face. It's something which follows all of us through the whole life. As we talk to the, to get today with, uh, with the other class that, uh, that the kids, the uh, first thing which we saw is mother's face and the face is something which they recognize as a first. So this all faces comes from some kind of doodle drawing or whatever and uh, I did it in the time when I wasn't uh, able to live from my uh, work and uh, I used to make money as a, as a stage painter or some kind of movies like the, in the time of Prague was a big <coughs> destination for an American, American production company so I worked on Blade 2 and Alien Service Predators and From Hell some kind of movies as a, simply as a stage and uh, during the evenings I just try to keep myself self in some kind of shape so I did like maybe 20 drawings or 10 drawings or 5 drawings just to, to do it something and don't lose the, don't lose the contacts or with, with my kind of kind of me or something like this and I was really trying to like forget all the borders so I just make faces just the faces Nothing was like, uh, sometimes it was like five faces look similar, sometimes it was something different. It's mostly aquarelle and, uh, and the ink and also some, some pencil, whatever. And mostly I show them like this, uh, you know, this bunch of stuff, like, like if they have one painting or one, one piece of work. Uh, another thing is that I, uh, after this, moved to the some uh, studio which was in the country, countryside, and uh, not, not far from Prague, just like a um, certain unit of my car. And this uh, countryside was really known from some ancient culture, so there was some kind of uh, bigger stuff in it, and blah, 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 whatever. And uh, so I just started to play with this kind of ideas of uh, witchcraft, which is, or, or some kind of magic or, or bigger, bigger stuff which, which it's there. And this, uh, that's the, the things in the left corner, it's uh, dedicated, to, it's connected with the time, the other uh, big news, it's, uh, but it's like things which I do in still to work, I work with the drawings and with this kind of ink stuff and doing the things just like a primer, just, just like just like, I don't know, doing one hour five drawings or something like this and just move on and start to do something else. It's inspired, of course, by some kind of this automatic stuff which just, you know, don't need to be explained so much. And from the time I also play with some techniques and one of the techniques was the, was the airbrush. And uh, so I, this kind of girls which uh, are close to make suicides, yeah, and uh, uh, that was kind of the strange manifestation of some kind of suicide or whatever feelings which, or feelings which we all time to time have. And after I was submitted for some, for some prize and I did uh, this kind of uh, stuff which called everyone you love will when they die, which is such true, it's like <laughs> And uh, that was uh, 
the idea of the, of the show was the was to explore some possibility or some kind of uh, uh, you know like I was inspired by some video games also so that the, the line of the, of the faces in the, in the end are uh, kind of characters which you like could be in the in the game but the game it's not the game it's not designed it's not made so it's just possibility of the game and uh, all like a changing level of us to do something strange or creepy as to make suicide or whatever and to go move to another level or something like this. And that's the, that's the painting from the series, some kind of <coughs> fall down uh, sweetheart. Yeah, and uh, this one, lightnings, because there are the lightnings. And other, other important things is that I mostly didn't put the uh, some kind of uh, complicated name for the paintings. Mostly I work with in a series, so the series is some kind of name or something like this. So it's mostly like a kind of movie and, uh, and the, the uh, stuff which you saw, the pictures are just a simple name. It's just white things or cars or whatever. And this one's called uh, In the Forest. Surprise in the forest. <laughs> And it's like this kind of witchy stuff there, and this kind of all uncontrolled uh, narrativity or whatever. So just uh, I just put there everything which was on my mind. A lot of my friends said me that, oh, it's too much. Just erase, just have to erase something. All oh, these eyes on the horse, that's so horrible. And this horse and the face, and I think it's just sometimes necessary to 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 just uh, just uh, cross the hall. Which even friends tell you it's, it's, it's so much so. It's sometimes good to, to do in something which you think it's maybe over something, it's over something. And in that, uh, in that work, I started to uh, like play with the technique, which is finally significant for part of my work. And that was the <coughs> scratched, uh, scratched painting. Uh, this one is uh, still mixed with uh, with, uh, with the colorful stuff and with kind of abstraction and uh, yeah and that's the technique how it uh, how I it's the uh, things which we which we all learn in secondary school I don't know maybe you also you just you just cover the paper with the with the wax crayons after you cover the crayons with the ink. And when the ink is dry, you can with any knife or, or needles to, to scratch it and, uh, and uh, you know, like make something different. Uh, so that was, that was just for, for photos of the stuff, how I worked at the time. And that's the first painting which uh, I did in this technique. It was shown at this my home gallery called Handcastner, it's running by actually one woman from here, from Virginia, and she's living in Prague. And uh, with her partner, but she's a Canadian. And this uh, show was called Soft and Pink because of the technique, it's kind of soft and I use as the, as the, as the base color, the pink color, because the pink is supposed to be color or I don't say to kids that the, that the, that the pink is the color of the skin and uh, kids just follow it, but it's fake, it's not true, you know, skin has a lot of different colors, but the, the pinky stuff, it's a, it, it's a, I don't know, it's just simply so that it's really good to start with something which is based on lie, so, so the pink is kind of referential to lies or, or, or kind of hypnosis which we all play sometimes in things, or kids. They don't think that skin is pink, but when it's told them that it's pink, they use the... I did. I use it. <laughs> so maybe not everyone, but I use it as, as, as a skin color, so that's the preferential noise. And, uh, and this one, it's <coughs> uh, some, just a, just a subway, subway, something strange in the subway band, and this all it's uh, wearing uh, this kind of, like the kids in 
is entrance with the uh, high dam there as an entrance from the old, for, from our old uh, house where I was living with parents. And this uh, stuff on the right corner, that's the, that's the entrance to the subway station. You know? And I started in that one play more with this kind of fears from the atomic wars or atomic disaster, which was in the in the first half of the 50s, really strong. I will just get back in it later. And that's our some drawing, which also refers on it. It's like a big drawing. Is this this one on the right, right corner, and the, like I think eight meters, and this other ones are like four meters. And that's our some sculptures, which I also worked on. That's our bleeding gates, and they was they are just small, like I don't know, like 40, 40 centimeters, and they was maybe small, say to 20, and they was uh, inspired by this kind of Wiedermeyer, uh, which which was which was really middle class style of, of art of, from the <coughs> second half of the uh, 19th century. This kind of cute thing which you want from my son or whatever, which you want to have at home. And I just play with it and put there some kind of uh, <coughs> strange, strange things. Yeah, and uh, here we are, here we are in the first movie. Uh, I will show you part of it now. The first movie was, uh, it's made with the marionettes. The marionettes uh, was designed by my drawings, but I didn't do it because it's, I didn't know it before, but, uh, but uh, marionettes, it's, it's really hard stuff to make it. It's, it's a lot of rules in it, and you have to be really precise and not to do it because half it, I have to have to play with it. So, yeah, I wish you the first, first movie.
to um, ask you an important for me this show which I did in uh, it's just on the main uh, art gallery in, in, in Kunzala in Prague. It was together with uh, some well-established German artists like Jonathan Hans and Jonathan Adler. And at that time I just came back to, the, to my school and took uh, <coughs> some uh, photos and uh, all the... Just a little bit something. Uh, painting called uh, uh, 
thing. And, uh, you know, again, playing with the, with the stuff, which is very terrifying, she would be looking at this guy who had, uh, had uh, hands, which is like, like a donkey or whatever. And, uh, and this, yeah, this is, it's also of the losing the virginity of the, And uh, that's this kind of the painting, which was like the entrance to the school. And you can see the, the I know, there's some robot. Which I was working at the time, was that I uh, first 
interested in some kind of the first coat under the, uh, under the canvas was uh, oil color, little bit mixed with the acrylic. After when it was dried, I just uh, simply cover everything again with the ink, the black, and after I wash it with the water, so somewhere, somewhere the black stays, somewhere not, and after I just put more, more oil on it or something like that. So it's kind of complicated technique which, which helped me to, but it helps me to just uh, concentrate on things which are uh, my fascination with the yeah, and it's another show which was in Berlin in some way and was inspired by the movies from Nicolas Rauch, uh, the Now from 1974. Uh, it's a movie, it's kind of uh, horror, uh, but uh, it's all about intimacy that uh, it's some, about some couples which they, they lose it. Okay, it's a bit hard to find themselves again, but it doesn't matter really about the story, but it's really well done and well made. And, this kind of obsessivity that we all are like uh, fascinating about uh, other people, privacy or something like this. That was the main, main things for, the, for this show. And uh, I just uh, sent a store a lot of thousands and thousands of photos of the people which they are, like, feel insecure or <coughs> which they feel strange or whatever. And I use them for, for a while. See the crying, crying girl, and it's the some wolf painting, and uh, that's again stuff which it's, it's a combination of both. It's the it's the it's the it's the hospital <coughs> room where I was as a kid investigating some some stuff which I have, and uh, that's the nurse there which is looking from the window and.
I'll start like this, uh, you know, because we mostly observe the things in, a, in a galleries or wherever from one side. So I try to turn it, turn it upside down. So it's we as a viewers are for someone a part of the painting of the of the art. So we are like the, you know, she's turning that down and she's just looking for us, but she got the dying for us, but uh, really, but this what's in the is the one which is on the neck, so now we see the head, so it's me, we are part of the, of the painting, we are part of the, the art, we are part of the whole story, so this kind of mix of the things, or, or to put the viewer to the, to the position that he has to deal with, uh, with, uh, with the reality in the art, that he's a part of it, yeah, that's, that's an important thing for me. And also is that uh, you as a, as, a, as a visitors have a, a, a nice kind of possibility to put your own story behind it. You can play with it, you can, it's, it's like the kind of, kind of uh, my pleasure to, to invite you into this kind of your own world of the term. Yeah, and that was the initial was in Paris. It's called the uh, following Marcus Palmer from the Abyss. It was also inspired by this kind of uh, Moroccan style and also of the Slavic epic. It's the huge uh, uh, show, the huge painting which was, the, which was <coughs> painted one by the Alphons Mucha, one of the Hartney artists uh, in a chain. It was also in Paris and also in the States. And I was also inspired by this because mm -hmm. the, the Czech is full of Czech one is full of castles because it was more you know, like the holiday holiday uh, part of the Austrian Hungarian monarchy for the for the rich people. So it's full of castles. But of course this all the nobility was set away after the communist so everything was open for public. So I remember me as a kid to saw a lot of, a lot of uh, castles full of the full of the trophies of the animals of paintings or whatever of course and, you know just like it used to be someone's home but like, now it's for everyone you know, it's kind of a strange feeling to observe someone's home and uh, that's the one of the painting it's again that she uh, with the uh, with the uh, stuff from hospital and it's uh, it's uncle, I think it's called her. It's like some hero who's dying or, or is passed away or whatever, and it's inspired also by some kind of opera. So from, from it could be Wagner or or whoever or with this kind of uh, kind of romantic uh, romantic uh, history or whatever. Yeah. And that's uh, again it's it's some. It's some uh, the interior of some, of some communist hotel in Bratislava. <coughs> and I put there some other, other stuff. Yeah, you know, like the, this kind of mystic things happened behind the architecture of some kind of senses. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, that's the other painting of the series. It's uh, based on some kind of really small picture or something which I just downloaded from the internet and I never was sure if there is someone feeding someone or someone strength or strength or someone or kill that or kill someone. I don't know, I just, I just think this kind of, it's important because it's, you know, two people are trying to do something to get, you know. And that's the, again, the guy who saw the things, the guy who trying to understand and so we go again to the other series, and this one was uh, inspired by the <coughs> little bit, little bit. So French and stuff, it takes a red thing from uh, Hitchcock, and uh, this movie from the uh, Tarkovsky Stalker. And all of the paintings in the series are, you know, just when we saw the people behind, or people which are looking out of the painting. So maybe the most important things which are done are somewhere else. Um, some, it's something in the real world, or it should be us, or whatever. We just saw something, some part of the something, you know, like here. This uh, building, uh, strange history, it was, it was uh, in the 50s, it was mental 
there is some kind of stretch back behind. As long as I think that it's part from some of my dream, so it seems like uh, yeah, so they can produce it. And uh, this one, that's the architecture which is there. It's uh, from Constable, the building was abandoned just uh, 20 years before, but it's looked like it was abandoned like 100 years before. So the nature is really quick and uh, because it was industrial and that's the uh, part of the sun covering all over the world. And the nature is really quick and, you know, I just, uh, it's kind of cool to find out that if we left the, if we haven't enough power to, to take care about the uh, planet, uh, about the nature, the nature will finally help itself you know, somehow. And there is the part of the sculpture, which is like the stoic sculpture of man, as if comes some kind of preparation to the uh, sculpture of the, 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 the stone, which was behind the prayer, but the thing is there just uh, for six years, and after they have to destroy it because there was this cut of, of the, of the stone, which was, you know, bad guy. And that's my father, this morning. Oh, 
poem, it's about some young boy coming home and he's in a, in a, he's in a dream and you will saw it. And uh, that's the show, the show looks, this guy who was on, this Tomás who was on the, on the, on the video, he's, uh, he did the architecture part of it, so it's like uh, it was necessary to put some kind of functionative feelings, inside the feelings in it, so this kind of <coughs> orders and corridors is really important for it. I, in, in, that, in that paintings I first uh, worked with some kind of uh, assemblage stuff. I, did, I cut some figures and put them on a painting, so they are like part of the painting, but they are from different materials, so not too good. And that's again the museum boy who's there. And that's, the, that's, the, that's this neighborhood which everything has happened. And that's again uh, the end of coming home. That's, that's the, this one that you're looking at, right? That's the building when I grew up. And really the important part of the movie it's uh, how this kind of um, space drawing, whatever it's called, it's all based on the Hubble telescope photos. But I read it, read it with this kind of uh, handy and this stuff and it's, it's, really, it's really important that this, uh, this, uh, this uh, light from a star, it's really old, you know, it's, it's uh, hundreds and thousands of years old light which we saw, so this light which we saw this night, it's probably light uh, which starting to come into our and the uh, pyramids was built or whatever, this kind of relativity of time, it's fascinating, so. Actually, when, when we look at the stars, we just uh, saw the past, because that's the strange things. And uh, I also work with this kind of collages, that's uh, mostly things uh, which was uh, cut from the drawings, and it's like uh, five or four pieces of glasses, and they are behind it, so they make some kind of different, <coughs> different reality. And the uh, last uh, picture here are the hands. Uh, that's the most thing which I, as an artist, saw to do. It's, it's hands which are doing this stuff, you know. Hands and eyes, probably. And I will show you the, the, the last movie, which was, uh, which I um, did this year, and it was uh, I, uh, the last movie, the movie which I showed the part before, was uh, uh, built with whole crew, you know, with. Uh, uh, it's, it's like action movies, so the marionettes are lit by some um, actors and you have to, I have to set all the sets and everything and I have to lead like, I don't know, 10 people to say them what to do and to hire the camera guy or whatever, so it was, it was really stressy and I spent a lot of time just with the production and <coughs> I just, I just uh, don't like it and, and uh, I just finally decided it's better to or in some kind of intimacy, just I collaborated just with one guy who was really good with the kind of classical animation. And I tried to animate the, the paintings and uh, uh, yeah. And uh, I also, this important part, it's the music, it's the oh, sound. It's from the, one of my friends, who's from Los Angeles, but he's now in Prague, it's Freddie Rupert, he's really cool, cool musician. And uh, the, the voice, the voiceover, it's uh, by me, so it's, uh, but I, I, I play with the idea to put some professional or some, or some English actor or whatever to, to, to do it. And, but I just finally felt strange to watch it because it's, you know, with the perfect Oxford accent. You know, the story from the rafts. I just felt strange, so I finally did it by myself. So maybe if I'm not to understand it, but take it as a kind of advantage and then this kind of uh, intimacy it's part of it. So, so that's, the, that's the movie which called uh, Every Planet. Right? Again, we 
to all sign, or the long time, and those reflections, memory, which gets in the way of everything and won't let go, as if all I live through now was necessarily twisted away by what I'm afraid to call the horrors. I want to push them away, and at least for a while, where I see everything in its uniqueness, but every part of the past kicks my feet from underneath before each step. And I fall again and see a friendship against the edge of another step. Sometimes I hope that my feet will snap and I will spit my tongue out. I won't be able to say anything anymore. Nonsense. Everything would stay inside and it would eat the brain and make it the heart. And the heart would be so heavy that it would fall deeper until it went through the hole where I'm supposed to have legs. There, where they touch the ground, it would fall down where it would burn to death in the crackling cone. To wait back or home is perhaps the only way to get out, but to run away and forget is impossible. I tried that already, didn't I? An accepted figure does nothing else. It's always around another cone. I always come up to it, and at the moment I lay my hand on its shoulder and want to look in its face, it starts to twitch. It won't show me its face. That's why I paint faces again and again. It's probably me when I was how old? Twelve or eleven? And what actually happened among those half built houses? Nothing is probably not an answer. But at least to find the right question little by little. But maybe it's like this. I wanted to forget only something and in the end I forgot everything. Timelessness. Probably the beginning of autumn, the beginning of school, and an afternoon after some dull and boring class, during which I look out of a grabbing window until it finishes and I can get out. Then, after the doors open, everybody runs out and goes home. Then too, but I erase them. They are not there now. Although they were there. Do I remember their names? Probably yes. But their faces? Those empty faces again, as always, when I try to pick out one of that multitude. It's only me walking along in the city where there are windows higher and only towers and among them empty spaces, little trees and on the ground sticking out to close the wires. Sometimes a muddy puddle and a cracked piece of concrete. In the parking lot in front of the grocery shop are parked a couple of cars. All of them look similar, red, blue, red. I just opened the glass door. I always have a feeling it's going to shut it down on me. It will crack and I will be avoiding the splinters. Bang. When I close it, it really slams. Then the lift. The door closes terribly slowly. I remember how once someone was chasing me. I don't know which bastard, and it took forever before it closed. I could hear them banging on the door. They greasy hair and bad feet. There's a mechanism that doesn't allow it to close faster, though I tried, but it would always bounce back from the magnetic clock, and that won't snap. I actually don't know who attacked me from those corridors, but those corridors are definitely still there. They are behind the door, they are now on the ceilings and along the walls. There are pipes to which blows everything from us. Ship and water and electricity and mainly boring crusty water. These are the intestines of this house. They are hanging and something or someone may be in them. At such a moment I have the biggest fear from the fact that there is nothing there. That if I was left alone and all the doors slammed shut and I didn't have the keys, I would be left alone to be in war. Well, the doors close terribly slowly. They are dirty. Sometimes someone smokes there. 
Sometimes someone spits on the floor of the floor of the ceiling. Someone cows with a clear can into bed with banded metal wall. It clutters, and I, like a bar that comes back up the throat, head upstairs. The grubby fluorescent light really flickers. On the floor below us, it always creaks weakly. Us, if in the shed, there was a piece of wire or plug sticking out only to make the sound and touching the cabin. I open the door, only every so. I hear her machine. It's buzzing over and over again. And everything in the flat smells of machine oil. And it's mechanical too. She's leaning over the bags that she sews together inside out. And the bags are turned outside in. Sometime in the evening, and they are everywhere. She's everywhere in a striped dress. I tell her everything, how it was, what happened, and so on. I'm waiting for Ash. He will come in the evening to dinner, homework, and TV. Then, time for bed. Lights are out early. But first, to promise Ash to wait until he falls asleep. I won't disappear before that. I watch him so that they wouldn't kidnap him. Where? We live high. It's a very long way to our place from the ground floor, and still the pressure can shoot the rusty water up to pipes, at our place, up to toilet and bathroom. Sometimes it's there, nothing but rust and stinking steam. Why couldn't a vampire climb up to walls of concrete, attack me or him, or just suck someone's blood, and turn them into another freak? I have good garlic and cross above my head. I count everything in the headboard in the dark. Then I fall, and I still hold on to myself a little, when suddenly I hold that spaceship. It's transparent. Around me there's millions of worlds, thousands of suns exploding at single moment. Everything happens in the universe which is very close. It's here, and I need it. But it's inside my head. Thousands of planets, and I fall in the vortex, and I on the ship. I come near the neutral star. At that moment, I realize, or I remember, that the motor was off, and I was at the ship's midpoint. My spread eagle position was getting uncomfortable. It was four minutes to pay him here. Something creaked in the cabin below me. I couldn't see what it was, but I could clearly see a red point glaring among blue radial lines, like a lantern at the bottom of a well. Besides, the view of fusion tube and the tanks and other equipment, the blue stars glared at me with the light that was almost white. I was afraid to look too long. I actually thought they might blind me. There must have been hundreds of gravities in the cabin. I could even feel the pressure change. The air was thin at this height, 150 feet above the control room. And now, almost suddenly, the red dot was more than a dot. My time was up. A red disc leapt up at me. The ship swung around me. I gasped and shut my eyes down. Giant's hands gripped my arms and legs and head, gently but with great firmness, and tried to pull me in two. The pressure is still enormous. In the end, when everything shrinks to one intense and sizzling scrum of dizziness and pain, those hands let go of me. Even the ship has disappeared. I am out. And around me black nothing. Nothing, although there's something in it again. I fell back in it, being drawn by that heavy planet to its surface. Into its molten core, from that vortex, things begin again.